Hey guys, you joined us live on Facebook for a first of a kind. We've got tech and we've got software that actually works with the live streaming. So, Maud, how happy are you right now? Finally working first round. It's good. <laughs> Excellent. This is great. This is this is what how it should be. Isn't that great? Um, Maud, so um, jaw pain. So jaw pains are, are, are such a common thing that we come across in clinic, isn't it? But People often don't come in um, to um, really, they don't come in because of the jaw pain. They often come in because of symptoms associated with the jaw pain, don't they? So what kind of symptoms do people come in with um, when they've actually got jaw pain and that's the real reason they're coming in? So the, sorry, I don't know if you can hear, but it's the clapping, so it might be a bit loud at the moment. It's gonna stop. <laughs> We're going to get in trouble. We should be clapping. <laughs> so mainly with jaw pain, I'd say they're coming with headaches. So that's what we talked a little bit about last week about headaches. And yeah. then today we wanted to look a bit more about jaw pain, which is the common symptoms um, of headaches. So jaw pain can cause a headache quite often. Okay, good. What are the common symptoms that, um, that you'd say that... Uh, um, more related to the actual jaw itself so aside from the headache what would you say people actually come in with yeah so some people would come in with some clicking in their jaw so as they open and close their mouth they can hear some clicking um, some people get their jaw that's completely locked so it locks open or it's locked and closed some people get pain when they're chewing so whilst they're eating or when they're talking as soon as they start moving their jaw yeah. um, some people, I think some people can get muscle spasm as well. So if any muscles of the jaw get completely in spasm, they then start to get pain in the jaw and they struggle to, to talk and yeah. eat as well. So it's quite a complex joint, isn't it, the jaw? And um, it often ends up with people having quite serious things done with the jaw eventually. But um, I think a lot of the time it's because people maybe don't understand like, that they can get help with their jaw. So they've got clicking in their jaw, they've got little bits of pain around here it hurts when they bite bite down those are common symptoms that i would see in clinic um are there other symptoms that you'd you'd find that patients would come in complaining of that you think oh i wish you would told me about that sooner and we could have done something about it yeah i think with jaw pain there's a lot of um what we call bruxism so it's people clenching their teeth so some people just coming and it's like oh i've been really stressed stressed at the moment and I wake up in the morning and I start feeling my teeth and just my jaw being a bit sore. And that could be a sign of bruxism. So just them kind of grinding their teeth and really clenching their jaw during the night. And then you just wake up with this achiness in their jaw. So I think that's another thing so that I would look out and try to address as well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so when you've got someone with jaw pain, how do you start assessing them in clinic? And what, what are you looking for when you see someone with jaw pain? Yeah, so at first, like, have a look at how it moves and have a look um, if there's nothing more serious. We want to make sure that the pain is coming from the jaw. So we would do a bit more testing, a bit more questioning about that. And then I would really uh, have a feel of how the jaw is moving. So you're feeling where the joint is just around that, just um, in front of the ear, yeah. looking at how it opens and closes. So you're looking if there's any deviation into the jaw. Yeah. Uh, if it goes more one side to the other. Um, and then trying to see if there's um, prior trauma or prior, for example, whiplash or things like that. Yeah, great. So that's a good point you made there. Do you see a lot of people, there's a lot of people that have whiplash, aren't there? And one of the common things that people come in with is jaw pain after whiplash. How does that tend to present and what, what kind of things should people look out for with, um, with that kind of uh, episode of jaw pain? Yeah, so after, after these... Um, car accident so the shock going through the neck is going to draw in the pain as well so in the jaw sorry um so it's going to make the jaw kind of go in and out and it's just going to on the joint where the disc is because we have a little disc just in the joint here i think um we'll talk about anatomy maybe after just to make sure that people understand how the joint work but so you get can you can get the disc in there a bit irritated and a bit injured so you need to make yeah. sure that that's all um okay and I think that's one of the main thing, and they will start getting just achiness all around their jaw and and uh, yeah. white biting as well. Yeah, I think it's really important when people, when patients come in 
to clinic, they're often in a situation where they're, kind of, especially when they come to our clinic, they're often in a situation where they have uh, lost a lot of faith, faith and hope and they're kind of at the stage where they're kind of trying as a last resort, which um, to be honest, I love because it's really nice to be able to make that big difference with people um, when they come in. I know you're exactly the same as me. It's really rewarding to uh, see people come in with jaw pain and watch them go out and be able to uh, function pretty normally. But um, are there things that you do with your clients in clinic that um, you um, show them to do as well? Because I think that's important that we, we try and empower the patients rather than try and get them to keep coming back. It's really about educating the patients and showing them how they can manage their symptoms better and what they can do as well. Yeah, and there's lots of little exercise that um, that they can do actually and that show a lot of, of exercise that they can do. Um, yeah. For example, you can uh, do some inhibition of the muscles. So inhibition is just putting some pressure on the muscles and then allowing it to relax. Yeah. So you can do that on the exterior of the jaw, but you can also can go uh, in your mouth and then go right at the back and try to um, allow those muscles of the jaw just to relax. Um, so that's two good exercises to do at home. Just if you have bruxism or if you are stressed kind of before going to bed, it's good to do it before. And then it allows your jaw to let be less clenched or less tense during the night. Um, you can even do what we call MET, so you can do that to yourself. So it's just basically your, for example, if you do with your mouth open and closed, so for, if you have uh, your mouth that's locked open, for example, so you can't close it, you would do the exercise by putting your hand on the bottom of your chin and then you will try to open your jaw even more. So you open your mouth and you resist the movement. Then you stay for a couple of seconds and then you relax. And that will activate the muscles and then relax the muscle. And that will help to um, decrease the muscle tension and help you to move your jaw a bit better. Yeah. So you can do those kind of exercises at home. So lots to, to do. Brilliant. I think one of the key things that I see in clinic with people with jaw pain is, and I'm sure you, you're aware of it as well, Maud, is that um, I think because they're not aware of what's going on with their jaw, um, they do find it quite difficult to understand how the exercises work. Um, so I tend to make sure that patients, when they come in, we have a good history. We talk about what's going on. Um, we talk about stress because stress is a big component to a lot of people's problems, especially now. Um, it's amazing how many people are coming in on, online to the online clinic. And just a lot of it is just reassurance and, and kind of understanding what's going on. So I like to make sure that we've got that base covered. Uh, once that base is covered through showing the patient a little bit about what goes on. So how do you show the patients how to assess their own jokes? I know you do that in clinic, don't you? Yeah. So I am um, looking for, because you can get them to put their hands here and look for clicking and stuff, but what else do you do with them? So I'd look and make them look in the mirror as well and make them look how, like make them open their mouth and close their mouth and then see if they uh, have their chin that goes to one side and the other. I think I actually have that. So I don't know if you want me to show it. Sure, it's Oh, look at that. You That's see when I come back up? Yeah. You just come, oh, it's the other side. It's yeah, weird. What you do? A little bit coming up as well. A little and bit. Down as well. What you're looking for is the, the, the teeth in the middle, right. so the, the occlusion. So the in, um, what kind of teeth are they? From the, in, they're not inside. Yeah, I, the I have no idea. <laughs> I was thinking about the special name, but it's this 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 lockdown. It's got me got me very bad. But just the front teeth. They're called your front teeth. Um, but the gap between your front teeth um, and the gap between your bottom front teeth that should be aligned, shouldn't it? So that's kind of what you're looking for. But um, it's very interesting with Maud. So chairs again, Maud. Okay. So explain to us what's what's happening with that because I think that's really interesting. And if you're at home now and you're watching live on Facebook. Go to the mirror or on your phone and have a look and see if your jaw deviates. Because if you've got problems inside your jaw or headaches, it could be related to what's going on there as well. Yeah, so actually, um, I don't, you can't hear that, but I have a little click on, it's weird because I'm showing, on um, that left side. Yeah. Um, so I can hear it clicking as the end of my movement. I think what's going on is as well if I touch where my um, joint is here, you can feel how far it goes and how much it moves. And when I do it, I go on this side. It's just completely going out. So I actually have my... Oh, the left hand side. Right. It's moving um, more forward and it's moving a bit more outwards as well. So I think I have just my jaw, uh, who's fully a little bit kind of 
lopsided. Yeah. And as I open, because the joint uh, movement is not smooth and straight, it's going to start doing those kind of thing and then come forward. And so you're going to get this misalignment into yeah. the bottom part of your jaw as well. So that's so, so when you're in clinic and you've got someone with the kind of jaw that's kind of opening and deviating towards one side, um, what are you trying to do with that? Because it's the click normally comes from the hypermobile side, doesn't it? Where it's moving like kind of too much. Um, so what do you do with someone? Because you're not going to be stretching that side, are you, where it's moving a lot? Yeah, so you're going to try to work uh, on the other sides, on the muscles. You're going to try to articulate the joints. So there's um, exercises that you can do to move your joint yourself and an exercise that when we are face-to-face -face in clinic that we do as well to try to open up and to decrease the movement uh, to the muscle tension. Yeah. Um, and then actually these MET type things that I showed before, the one when you push uh, down, you can actually push it to the side as well. So it's quite difficult because it's not a movement that we often do. But uh, usually go to the side where it deviates. So I would go to my left side and I would try to push my jaw to that left side and try to um, uh, resist that movement. And that actually contract the, the muscles and then allow the opposite side to relax. Yeah, yeah. Um, so METs are quite good, aren't they? Because it's... Um it's a technique that you'll normally see with people like having their hamstrings kind of stretched in the gym but the the technique actually applies to any muscle in the body doesn't it any muscle that you can voluntarily contract so mm -hmm. um so when we apply it to the jaw it's all about trying to create more balance around the the jaw isn't it so that, that's really what you're trying to trying to trying to get there and it's exactly a balance thing, isn't it? Because it's one bone that attaches on both sides. You just yeah. want to create this balance and the middle ground between both to allow the, the similar and uh, symmetric movement on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very interesting. So jaw pain, big cause of headaches, clicking around the jaw as well. Um, if you've got stress, you may go to sleep and you might um, uh, experience grinding at nighttime. That's another thing as well. So people can wake up and they've got this kind of facial pain at night time which is like pretty awful to be waking up with that um so if that sounds familiar to you at home we want to hear from you and hear about any any experience or any questions that you might have um about um about jaw pain or clicking or waking up with kind of facial pain we want to hear from you because we want to try and help you and get you some great results with it but more so once you've assessed people and you've gone through that assessment you've started to do some treatment um, you were saying about doing internal work inside their mouth. So what, what's that look like? Clearly, you've got gloves on. You've got kind of your protective wear if you're working in these circumstances. But um, what kind of things would you do? And what are you looking for when you're going inside the jaw like that? Yeah, so you, you're you looking for, so first, yeah, you have all of your, even if not these circumstances at the moment, you always wear gloves to do that. Um, you will start very, so you don't go kind of go in really violently because people can be a bit weird about going in the mouth. So you would follow kind of the, the teeth and the jawline trying to make sure that the person is comfortable with whatever you're doing. Yeah. And then, so you would go right at the back, uh, a bit after the teeth and just go in your cheek and I would uh, start feeling. So I'm palpating, I'm having a feel of the muscles around there. So I'm feeling the texture of the muscles and I'm feeling if uh, I'm trying to report to the patient if they feel any pain as well where I'm touching. Um, and so I'm trying to find these little uh, tight muscles and then I'll apply a tiny bit of pressure and then try to relax the muscles. Yeah. So at the beginning, a muscle that's really tight would feel quite um, hard, touchy on the feeling, like really hard. Um, and then after when it's relaxed, it would be a bit more bouncier and softer. So that's what you're looking for. Yeah, exactly. Good. Excellent. Um, and you don't do acupuncture, do you? No, but yeah, you can do great acupuncture as well. And, um... Yeah, so one of the things that I tend to do in clinic with my clients, a um, little bit more ambitious than pressing their muscles, but we, we actually put needles into their face. Um, so you've got to be quite careful because there's some major structures that you don't want to be hitting um, around the face. The facial nerve, which comes out just behind the, the, the ear here, is a really important structure not to be hitting. And you've got some really important blood vessels in the face as well that you also don't want to be hitting. The temporal artery, that's definitely one that you don't want to be hitting. Um, and you've got some, um, I mean, those are the main structures that you don't want to be hitting. But where you want to be placing the needles is really trying to target uh, some of the trigger points, often in the big muscle here called the masseter, which sits on the side of your jaw. And you'll see some people, especially if they grind their teeth at nighttime, Mer um, Meryl, 
Maud's not too bad at all, but the, the, the shape of your face here, if you've got very developed jaw muscles here, mm -hmm. it's likely that you probably clench your teeth and you're using those jaw muscles a, a lot excessively. And that can be quite detrimental longer term to the joint up here. So you've got to be careful with that. Um, but acupuncture is really effective for that kind of thing. We also use it um, on distal points as well, just to create general uh, kind of body-wide relaxation. So that's super important for us um, in clinic as well. But the most important thing I find is what you're going to go on to describe now, Maud, isn't it? It's the exercises that you give to people with jaw pain afterwards. Yeah, so I'd, I'd, I'd give this exercise. So I'd give them to do the, the ones with uh, the opposite motion. So when you uh, resist on your jaw, I'd give the ones that you can um, do yourself. So these muscles um, like pressure. So you would just go, for example, uh, the line of your, of your bone cheek here, just bone, 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 and then you go just a little bit lower and you press on here. It might be very painful for people that do grind their teeth or if it is very um, uh, hyper-contracted, it can be very painful, so be careful. And if it gives you headache as well, sometimes it can refer up, so you can directly feel it as you press on it. So take it really easy and gently. If it's too much, um, then you can come from the inside. So sometimes you can do what's called kind of a pinching um, um, exercise. So you just go from the inside of your mouth and from the outside and you start pinching the muscles from both sides and trying to relax. Are you doing that on the masseter muscle in the side here or do you do it on the territory? muscles. And yeah, if you want to go even a bit further away. So if you go on the masseter muscle, I'm just going to show you now. <laughs> Um, you watched your hands, young lady. All those nasty viruses. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that's right mm -hmm. on the mistake, isn't it? That you're doing that. Yeah, yeah, and you go right at the back, and that's quite a bit sore on me. So I think on most people it might be a bit sore. So take it very easy, very gentle with your pressure when you apply there. Yeah, no, it's fa fabulous. Very interesting. Um, I think just one last thing. I think I want. Uh, that's not the only exercise I would give. I think I would give other exercise um, a bit further from the jaw, so to look at other muscles, um, to definitely look into the stress because that's one of the main main thing with with jaw. And if you are uh, grinding your teeth, that stress is one of the main factor. Yeah. So trying to work with stress as well and make sure that that's uh, looked after. And to release stress, sometimes neck um, stretches and then front of the neck hair stretches are quite good. Um, yeah. so I can do one for the scalenes. So scalenes are the muscle that come just right at the front of your neck here and then attaches onto your collarbone and then uh, right down here. So what you would do, you'd kind of press your hand onto your collarbone and put a tiny bit of pressure down and then you would look up and to the side, opposite to where your hand is. Well, that's a good stretch, that. And then put some light stretch, uh, tension through the front of the neck. Which is it's amazing. Good. I've been in practice for 20, almost 20 years now, and I've never seen that exercise before. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I love it. That's why I love it. It's such a great job. You never never learn everything. It's amazing. It's really, really exciting. Um, what, what I was going to go on to more, it's actually, I wasn't going to wrap up, but I was going to, just going to say a little bit about... Um, um about the other things that can be um people can complain of that, that relate to the jaw as well uh, you mentioned the neck which is really important to to mention because i think what a lot of people don't understand is that um or they forget to mention is that joints don't work in isolation um so every joint starts in its own orientation which is really important to remember that it's not just a static joint that's opening and closing by itself and i think sometimes uh, like physical therapy as a whole gets a very bad name because we don't think we can't as a as a profession we need to start thinking about how things function functionally um mm. so when you're opening your jaw it's not just about your jaw opening but if you watch my jaw i've probably got quite an easy one to see but can you see me there yeah well, it's only okay. if, I, if i open my jaw really wide what else can you see happen where well, you go back with your head, don't you, to allow this movement to, to be. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's really obvious, but it, it's, um, it always surprises patients when they come in with jaw pain and we actually start working on their neck and get this better. Because if the jaw can't open and close properly, 
Um, the first place to work is back here because once you get this working properly and nodding properly, um, and obviously the upper back and other things that are related to that, that can make a huge, huge difference to people's jaw pain. Mm -hmm. Like really, yeah, as, you, as you get this moving, then you're allowed to get your your head back. Then you're allowed to open your mouth. It's such a intertwined and yeah. combined movement, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. When I'm in clinic with my patients, I always um, do you remember that toothbrush advert? Which one? There's a guy. There's lots of them. Yeah, but there's a <laughs> there's a toothbrush advert. So I think it's Reach. So Reach has this toothbrush advert. This is a pen, by the way. But the guy on the toothbrush advert, um, literally, his jaw opens backwards like that. Oh, I think it's teeth. <laughs> brushes his teeth like that. Yeah. But I always that's a great one to use to describe it to patients. Clearly, it doesn't open like that, but it, it's quite useful for them to understand that. It's not just the jaw opening, it's actually the head nodding backwards as well as the jaw opening. So, oh, yeah. Very important to understand, isn't it? Because then when you understand the mechanics, you can put it right and you can understand where it's gone wrong as well. So with people with whiplash, it's their jaw gets affected, but a lot of the time it's their neck because of the effects of their head going backwards and forwards. Um, and that's what's causing the problem with their jaw. So it's super important. And a lot of people get clicking, don't they, after they have um whiplash whiplash yeah and then yeah. going back to the headaches that as well it's a lot of fun with the neck as well but then it's so close to the jaw so it's working all together to try and help the headaches as well yeah no really important really important uh Maud, as always love talking to you it's been great thank you for having me that's okay no it's a pleasure um so if you need to get hold of Maud, Maud's one of our osteopaths she works actually uh, remotely so if you do want to see her online and just have a chat um, she's more than happy to speak to you. Um, Maud, um, how do people get hold of you if they want to um, talk to you about any jaw problems that you, they might have? Uh, I'd say probably the easiest way at the moment is to drop a little comment on this video and then we'll, able to, we'll be able to contact you directly with information on how to contact me or just uh, call the reception at clinic and they'll be able to help you the best, best way that we can to help you with your jaw yeah, problems. Yeah, and we'll do our best to get back to you as quickly as possible. Um, it's bank holiday weekend this weekend. Maud, what are you up to this weekend? Not sure. Lockdown, I'm still inside. So every day is a bank holiday. Yeah, so. gardening, I think. I'll be oh, excellent. Make a day of it. Fantastic. Um, before we go, Maud, what would, say, what would you say your top three tips are for helping your patients with uh, jaw pain? Um, I think don't hesitate to come and see because it's not common that we deal with jaw pain. So I think don't hesitate to come and reach out to your osteopath or to your physiotherapist or anyone to yeah. try and make them help you. Um, there's lots of exercise that you you can do. So it's not about oh, I need to have surgery or dental work or things like that. There's lots of things that you can do at home. And then if it is coming with um with stress related, really try and work on that. And uh, that's going to be a big part of, of the help. Brilliant, brilliant. So we're going to be back next week more, aren't we? Yeah. Hopefully. We've got our tech working, so I'm super excited. I'm literally, yeah. I'm going to do another Facebook Live this evening just because <laughs> the tech's working, so it's going to be cool. I've actually got Stan coming back later because uh, I messed up yesterday because of the tech. Uh, uh, so I thought I'd invest and we'll get some new tech. So Stan's going to come back later. We're going to talk about running injuries and high performance as well so if you if you're around tune in for that but Maud it's been great talking to you tonight and we'll move down the body next week yeah. shall we? Perfect. Yeah. So we did neck last week and headache so we did shoulders cool so if you've got shoulder injuries and you'd love to hear more about how to solve your own shoulder shoulder soldier injuries <laughs> or at least get an idea of what's going on with your shoulder um, then and you want some specific advice then tune in next week and we'll tell you exactly how to go about that but for now, it's bye-bye from me. And bye for me. Take care, guys. See you later. Bye.